say a few words? Thanks. Good afternoon. My name is Jane Hundley. I am with First United Bank and it's a pleasure to be sponsoring the lunch here today. This is the second time we've gotten the opportunity to do that and we always enjoy uh, seeing familiar faces and meeting new faces. Uh, speaking of faces, I would like to introduce a few that uh, came with us today as a part of First United Bank. Uh, I want to apologize on behalf of our president, Jason Hawkins. Jason is traveling on business today and couldn't be there, couldn't be here, so you get me to speak to you. He's much better at it than I am. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, I would like to introduce our table. First of all, you all know Shannon Coote. Shannon is your Vice President here at the Chamber. Uh, she's the Banking Center Manager here in our Beaver Dam location. C Corey Ringer is a mortgage lender. Uh, Corey's there. Tammy Smith, uh, when you call, you hear Tammy's lovely voice in the Customer Care Center. Uh, Deidre Johnson. Deidre is uh, with Deposit Operations. Deidre's also a familiar face to all of you all. Suzelle Legrand uh, is with us today as well. She's with Operations. Chris Finley is a commercial and mortgage lender. He is with us today. Chuck Shockley is the newest member of the First United Bank family, and Chuck is in business development. And I'd also like to recognize one of our advisory board members with, you, with us today, Mr. Steve Gary. So thanks, guys, for coming with me today. Um, I wanted to take the opportunity. We've been in the Ohio County market now for um, well over almost a year and a half. And we just want to take this opportunity to thank you all for the welcome that we have received in this community. It has been overwhelming. Um, everyone has been kind, everyone has been welcoming, easy to work with, county government's easy to work with, the city governments have been easy to work with. Um, you all have been great and I'll have to tell you that one of the most active and generous communities I have ever had the opportunity to work in. Uh, there is always something going on. There's a festival, there's a, there's a car show, there's a concert, and it's always for a great cause. You know, we got the opportunity to work this summer with Jo Beth with the concert series uh, there at the amphitheater, and she does a fabulous job. You all have so much talent in your community. I work with Seth at the newspaper, and what a talented editor you all have. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of you all for the welcome that we have received and just to commit to you that when you all do these things out in the community and you're out raising funds for things that are going on, AARP, which we're going to be uh, partnering with them coming up soon on an event, First United Bank will be there. You'll see those faces and we'll be sponsoring. Uh, we do all we can to support the communities that we serve because you all support us. So again, thank you for the opportunity to be here today and to sponsor the lunch and we look forward to working with you all even more in the future. Thank you for those words. Um, we would also like to recognize some elected officials that we have here today. We have Hartford Mayor Dean Mitten. We have uh, Judge Johnson here. We have uh, Field Rep Tim, Th Tim Thomas with Mitch McConnell's office, and then we also have Senator C.B. Embry. Um, if you all have any words you'd like to say, you're more than welcome to say it. It's just nice to be here in Ohio County. I am Tim Thomas. I'm Mitch McConnell's field officer, Bowling Green. If there's any concerns or thoughts you would like for me to relay back to my boss, I'll be glad to do that. Or if you all have any uh, issues with federal agencies that you might be dealing with, sometimes Social Security disability benefits or any, anything like that, passport issues, feel free to give us a call. That's what we're for. Uh, we're in the phone book, uh, Senator McConnell and Bowling Green, and you can also find us online. So thanks again for allowing us to be here. Thank you. Okay, uh, we do have some new members with us today uh, that we would like to recognize. We have uh, New Beginnings is here today with us. And then uh, we also have blue, Bluegrass Family Dentistry. So thank you both for coming today. Uh, we're glad to see you on here. Uh, <clears throat> next, I'll introduce our Vice President, Shannon Coots. Uh, she'll introduce our speaker that we have today. So uh, Shannon, come on up and the floor will be yours. <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> are 
our speaker today is Steve Finch. Uh, Steve is our county coordinator instructor for Skill Train Ohio County. Steve, if you'd like to come on up. First, I want to say thank you to uh, each of you for the opportunity to, to come and speak. It is always a privilege. Uh, to present something that you're passionate about. And at Skill Train, we are very passionate about what we do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. Uh, we are the, just go back a second. We are the adult education provider, the resource for Ohio County. Uh, we are an extension of uh, Owensboro Community Technical College. And in short, um, I'll speak a little bit more in a second about exactly what all it is that we do, uh, but basically we help folks get their, uh, earn their GED and or transition to college. I'll mention in a second as well, uh, a little bit more about the and or. Uh, mission, uh, mission of OCTC Skill Train Ohio County is to encourage adult learners toward their fullest potential, to equip them with the necessary tools to reach that potential and to support them along their college and career pathways. Uh, in general, we're interested in helping the adult population of Ohio County improve their lifestyles through furthering their education. Um, and there are certain skills that we can help them along the way and certain benchmarks that we uh, try to bring them along and, and, and take them in that direction. Uh, in a possibility of, as far as doing that, the vision we imagine Ohio County in which education is valued, and we all realize the importance of that. Community members are well-educated in life skills and literacy, empowered to pursue their educational goals, employable, and the important part is not just employable, but in, yeah, actually employed. And the value of education is made evident. So that's a little bit, introduction, a little bit of who we are, uh, as far as what it is we do. I uh, mentioned that um, by and large, our, the, the biggest part of what we do is we help folks earn their GED. Um, if they've not completed that high school diploma, uh, we give them the opportunities, help, uh, help equip them with the skills and resources necessary uh, to do that. Uh, we have other things uh, that we accomplish along the way as well. Uh, we help them prepare for college training. I uh, mentioned a second ago, there's uh, this and or. Um, it, uh, one typical situation that can come about is a student may come to us, they need to earn their uh, GED, we may help them prepare them for that, and then once they've earned it, then they may have future uh, career goals that require further education. Uh, thankfully, our, with our close connection with OCTC, we're able to help guide them uh, along the way during the time that we've uh, been instructing them. Uh, we've kind of discussed with them, help them discover and explore what their career options are, what kind of training is involved, what would be necessary for that, and then we can help them guide, help guide them uh, to a uh, post-secondary institution such as OCTC. Um, so that happens quite a bit. But also what can happen as well is we may um, be involved with students who already have either already earned their GED or possibly have already earned, even earned a high school diploma. They are making an effort to attend uh, an institution such as OCTC, took a placement exam, possibly one or two, usually it's the math, uh, but one of those uh, subjects they're struggling in some, and they may come to us to help brush up on those skills to be able to take college level classes. So uh, there are many instances in which we are dealing with students who may even already have a high school diploma. In fact, we, we also have students that sometimes are even in the process of taking some college level classes already, but they may need assistance in one or two subjects as well. Uh, some other things that we help with, uh, we help, uh, we work closely with the uh, Career Center and with the uh, Work Keys and the NCRC, National Career Readiness Certificate Program. Uh, there are sometimes individuals will take that um, testing and may, for whatever reason, may want to improve their score. We have resources available uh, specifically for that. We can help work with, work with them there and then they can retest and hopefully earn that certificate that they're looking for. Uh, we have a program we also help students um, earn the, uh, the KESC, the Kentucky Essential Skills Certificate, and then another program that has actually taken off quite a bit just uh, in the past year, and I'm a little partial with this one because this is actually what my wife does. I get to work with my wife um, all day, mostly all day, every day, 
am still happily married. <laughs> she still puts up with me. Uh, people say, how in the world can you, they say it to her, how in the world can you do that? And it, it works out well for us. Uh, but she is our uh, ESL, ELL uh, teacher, instructor. And just over the past year, that program has really begun uh, taking off and we're seeing, not only are we seeing a significant number of students come in, but we're at the point now where we are seeing students that may have originally come to us to improve their English skills, and now they're on a GED track. Um, and we're really, really excited to see that happening. Um, and we also have some folks that come in and their kids' homework doesn't look like they remember their homework looking like, so they're needing some help. Hey, whatever it is to, to bring you in, we'll, we'll work with you and uh, help you meet your, your educational goals as well and hopefully help you become a better example uh, for the generation that you're raising. So that's some of what we do. Uh, next question would be, not just who we are, what we do, but all right, that's all great, sounds wonderful. Why does that matter? I had placed, uh, before, the, uh, before we started, I placed at the, each of the tables a uh, sheet that just gave some, broke down some basic statistics about the demographics of, uh, of Ohio County. I'm not going to bore you going through all of that. Uh, I did put a link up to the website if anybody is interested for that. But I do would like to take just a few moments and point out a few key um, statistics from there. Ohio County, based on these numbers, almost 20% uh, of the population living in poverty. That's a staggering figure. Uh, along with that, we're looking at over 20% of our population eligible for Medicaid. And here's one that hits significantly close to home for us. Almost a quarter of that population is trying to get by in this modern day workplace environment with less than a high school diploma. Um, to me, those figures are staggering. Uh, something that I think will be at least any bit surprised to see that goes along with that is we see Ohio County's unemployment rate uh, compared to uh, the remainder of the state. I think we're all aware that when we, talk, when we talk about these types of statistics, we're not just talking short-term dollars and cents issues. When we start talking poverty, unemployment, now we really start to get into some issues such as quality of life, health and wellness. Uh, we're possibly even talking about mental health issues. And unfortunately, I think what all of us are much more aware of than we'd like to be, we could also be dealing with some self-destructive coping mechanism issues. Thankfully, those are not issues that our office deals with directly after the fact. What I hope to show you is that we can be a component in the prevention um, strategy and prevention method. So why does it matter? It does matter. Um, according to a 2013 U.S. Department of Labor statistics, those who have at least a high school diploma or equivalency can expect to earn on average $9,300 per year more than those without. That's significant. Uh, that would be significant to me. I assume it might be most significant to most everyone in this room, um, particularly for the population that we're serving. Uh, that is significant. Along with that, you'll notice that not only does education pay in dollars and cents, but you'll notice if we're looking at a scale from uh, increasing degrees of education, not only is the income generally going up, we're also looking at the unemployment going down. That affects individuals, that affects families, and it also affects this entire community. Um, it does matter that we set a standard and we create an, an environment and a culture that values education. All of that to say, there is a problem. We are dealing with some difficulties, so what is the solution? Um, from the years to, fiscal year 2009 to 14, 164 Ohio County residents earned their GED diploma. That's good. That's working in a good direction. That's a good start. Of, that, of those, 69 of those went on to enroll in a post-secondary institution. Uh, many of our students will find their way to OCTC or a similar institution. Thankfully, there are even programs to where they can extend their education even beyond there. So now we're, we're actually starting to get in on a solution. Um, I don't need to tell you about the changes that have taken place in the modern day workplace. Um, there is 
an ever-increasing demand for uh, extended education. One thing that we, we, all, we notice though, even as we're going that direction, 40, over 40% 40 of those that did <coughs> go on and enroll in post-secondary institution still needed some type of remedial course uh, in their first year. That also is a service that we provide. That gets back to that and or I was talking about. We help folks make that transition to post-secondary education, but we also are there to kind of, we don't just drop them off, we kind of guide them along the process and help make sure that they, that they don't just get there, but they're successful in completing once they do. <clears throat> do you want to take a second while we're talking about this? I think we realize part of the solution is developing that culture that values education and presents to these individuals possibilities beyond what they uh, may have ever dreamed for themselves. Do you want to take a uh, minute to uh, speak about a program? Uh, the OCTC, uh, it's a statewide program, but OCTC is partnering with that. Uh, it's called the Work Ready Scholarship Program. Some of you may already be familiar with this. I'm not going to um, belabor you with too many details. I did include uh, information about that in your packets. But it is a program um, in which students can re actually receive free college tuition. There, are, there have been certain industries that have been identified as high growth sectors. And for those that meet certain basic minimum qualifications, there is a possibility of earning potentially up to 32 credit hours of college education for free. I would like to have known about that however many years ago that was for me, possibly the same for you. That's a great program. I've got four teenagers. This sounds like good news to me. <laughs> this sounds like very good news to me. Uh, if you're interested, uh, please see me. You can see my boss, Lindsey Kafer, is our, which are, is our uh, director for Ohio, Davis, McLean, and now Hancock counties. Uh, you can check out the information there. It's a wonderful program. It's an underutilized program, unfortunately. It's fairly new, uh, just getting started. This is one that we really need in every avenue possible to uh, be getting the word out so that our, our population can begin taking advantage of the resources that are being made available to them. So now we've talked about who we are, what we do, what the problem is we're facing. We've talked about some of the solution. We're wanting to encourage these folks to begin pursuing some of their possibilities. What have been the results? Of that group that I was talking to you about a second ago that did continue on their education during that time period, uh, we saw a 14% increase after only in their income after only one year of earning their GED. That's significant. If you were to receive a 14% uh, income today, that would be good news for you, wouldn't it? Along the lines there, here's where we really start becoming good news for community-wide. The employment rate for that group increased 10.6 points during that same time period. That's beginning to affect our entire community. That's changing lives and that's changing futures, not just for individuals, but for, for generations as well. What's the takeaway of all of this? I've given you some numbers, I've put some there on the table, I've hopefully quickly pointed out a few of those numbers. I was kind of rolling some of these over in my head uh, and kind of did some developing. I actually factored a few things out to intentionally be on the conservative side. If we were to look and take the entire adult Ohio, Ohio County adult population with less than a high school diploma, so out of the entire population, I factored out those that were under 18, so we're only dealing with adults, looking at around 4,000 adults, Ohio County, less than a high school diploma. Based on that figure that I quoted earlier, that each of those could expect an annual increase in salary of over $9,000, if we are looking at if each one of those were to attain that GED, not just for the immediate results, but now we're talking about future possibilities as well. We're talking about a total county annual lost income by those folks not having a high school equivalency of over $37 million. That Ohio County is losing every year because those educational goals have not been met. That is very significant. That becomes very significant. How many more years? Actually, 
I considered factoring out of this group those that were 65 or older, because I figured those folks may already be retired, but not necessarily a part of this equation. Then I realized, no, wait a second. Because of that lack of education, many of those folks may be forced into working years that they would like to have already been retired. They may still be working a job. But even beyond that, if I had factored all those folks out, all that would be saying is those, those are incomes that we have already lost year after year after compounded year. How many more years can we afford to lose? How many more countywide job opportunities can we afford to be passed over by because our workforce may not be prepared? How many more bright, young, educated Ohio County residents do we have to wave goodbye to because those self-sustaining jobs that they're looking for never located here in the first place? How many more generations do we have to see continue a cycle? I think it's important that we value and continue to promote a culture and environment that values education. This is a challenge that we are working toward tackling in our office. I would love the opportunity to speak with you about how we can partner together and work together and hopefully get this taken care of. Thank you very much, I appreciate your time. for that information. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Would you care to answer questions? Oh, if you're I need to apologize. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions for Mr. Finch? I know where you are, but maybe share with everybody uh, if they have someone interested in, in uh, some of the services where you're located. Oh, that's, yes. Uh, I don't know if everybody's aware. We are in the community building in Hartford, and thankfully we have some wonder, uh, the accommodations are wonderful. We uh, we have wonderful resources, we have uh, plenty of classrooms. The one thing that is somewhat of a challenge for us is there's not a lot of visibility, and as actually, I've had, actually had students mention to me that a lot of the folks that we deal with may not have the best associations with that building. Um, for many of them, good things don't happen there. So something that is very beneficial for us any opportunities we can have to get our name out into the community, whether off-site locations, um, passing out information, whatever we can do to get our name and uh, our, our visibility outside would be very beneficial to us. Any other questions? All right, again, thank you very much for speaking with us today. We, we appreciate that. Uh, we also have Cindy Farrell from United Way. Uh, she wants to uh, just give us some quick information about the campaign kickoff, I believe. So, Cindy, if you'd like to speak. In tonight's like campaign time kickoff again, we just wanted to announce that to the community. Uh, recently, you all have stepped the bus. I think many of you were there, participated over at the Walmart and the uh, United Way. About six years ago, Spirit Code getting that together. So, we do things besides just raise money in the community. We do a lot of community awareness. But it's campaign time. Two thirds of our campaign dollars come from the employees who will work at the company to get the payroll deduction. So we invite you to be a part of that. We love to have you a part of that. Steve spoke today. Skill Train is one of the agencies that we help to support. And what we do with United Way dollars, what they do with United Way dollars is people who want to get their GED but can't afford to take a test. The test is expensive. Their scholarship through United Way dollars to take that test. Carla here is a new member with New Beginnings. They, are, they uh, work with victims of sexual assault. So we provide some funding there as well. And they go into the school systems and provide education to the children that you have here to recognize old, old feelings, something's just not right there. So we have to support that. You're all very aware of your Ohio County Food Pantry. I think you're there your November speaker coming up pretty soon. We have to support that as well. So the only way we can do that is through the generosity of people in the community that give the United Way. Local money that's raised in Ohio County stays in Ohio County. I think that's important for you to know that. Unless you tell us, for example, 
your mom lives in New York, she gets meals on wheels, and you want your money to go to New York, then we'll make that happen. But otherwise, the money stays right here in Ohio County. Uh, Shannon and Judson are part of the committee, Judson, part of the committee that looks at the dollars that are raised and looks at the agencies who are applying funding, and then they have to make those hard decisions. They need this much money, but we only have this much money, so what are we going to do? We're going to have to do something to make that money stretch through. So I just looked around and thought, there's more than 50 people here. There's more than 50 people here. Think about this. If you did a payroll deduction at your place of work, you did $2 a pay period, okay? Just about pay period. 50 people in this room would be giving $2,500 to let you give. Now, I know that Shannon and Judson think, man, we could have used that when we allocated the dollars a while back because we didn't have enough money. So I encourage you to help the community and help us to help the people in the community because that's what we are about. We're about local people helping local people. So please, if your company is not running a United Way campaign and you're still not sure what United Way does exactly, talk with me and let me give you some information. Or maybe you are a, a mom and pop operation and think, well, we can't really run a campaign with our employees, but we might give a small corporate gift. Those gifts add up quick, quick, quick. So please help us help other people. That's what we're here for, is to work on behalf of the community. So thank you very much. All right, thank you, Cindy. All right, if you'll get your red ticket out, uh, while Cindy was speaking, I drew your ticket. Um, Ticket, uh, the prize, door prize today is uh, donated by First United Bank, and it's this flower arrangement over here. <laughs> Ticket number is 608333. Charlotte, all right. <laughs> if you'd like to collect your door prize, um, Shannon will make sure you get that, okay? And then I uh, also drew for our business in the spotlight, and it is uh, Signature Healthcare of Hartford. Um, so, <coughs> I believe uh, you're on this slideshow yeah. and we'll get you on the next one too. So um, we'll, we'll make sure we have that information on there. Um, some announcements that we just need to make before we dismiss. Um, we are going to start taking nominations soon uh, for our chamber award. So just be on the lookout and be thinking of uh, those chamber members who you would like to nominate for that. And then we're doing something new this year for um, Small Business Saturday, which is uh, after Thanksgiving, uh, the chamber is wanting to promote uh, those businesses who are going to be open on Saturday, uh, running specials and things like that. Uh, so if you are a small business uh, and you're going to be open on that Saturday uh, to participate in Small Business Saturday, get us your information. We're wanting to uh, look at pushing it out on Facebook. We're wanting to put an ad in the paper. And so uh, just get that information or help spread the word if you can. We'd appreciate that. Um, you also see on the slideshow uh, about hurricane relief, there are some drop-off points. If you all uh, do want to partic participate in that, uh, you can see those drop-off points. Um, and then also, as you leave today, uh, remember we have our Dollars for Scholars program as well. Um, if there's no other announcements, Charlotte has an announcement. Yes, uh, Friday at the Senior Citizen Day at the Fair, Brenda may want to share more about that information. Royces will be doing flu shots and we I don't know if y'all read or not, there's already two confirmed cases in Kentucky, and it's somewhat a little early. So, shots have started 10, and a portion of that will go to the food pantry for the backpack ministry complement of rice. So, keep that in mind. It's a two-fold there to shop and help the food pantry. And then, uh, on another note, I've been, I've been invited to go on a freedom flight in May of 2018 uh, to Washington with uh, World War II veterans. And the package deal was that I get to take 15 to 20 Ohio County World War II vets with me. So if you have a grandfather or great-grandfather that would like to go with me, I'll take good care of them. And, uh, and they're allowed to take a caregiver. So we have a form for the caregiver. So I'm excited about this. But most of all, I want our county to be represented uh, at that memorial in Washington with me. Thank you. Any other announcements? Sure, go ahead. Um, the City of Beaverton, this coming Saturday, we have our annual airing of the quilt. So if you're a business or if you live on Main Street through Beaver Dam, hang out some quilts, just air them out. We're kind of welcoming the season of fall. And we have invited author Bobby Bryant. She specializes in black patch quilting um, from the Western Kentucky region. And she is talking at 10 a.m. out of 
have the all five section building and we were there. So if you know any quilters or quilters clubs, three can just have a feeling presentation. So hang out in your quilts on Saturday, we'd love to see it. Okay. Anything else? All right, again, thank you all for coming today. Hope we had a good turnout for our uh, first membership meeting of the year. So we hope to see you all again uh, next month. Thank you all. Have a good afternoon.